But right now we're in Germany and we're driving on the Autobahn, heading over to Frankfurt to do the Form Next. We got some really cool interviews lined up and we're gonna see what kind of technologies they've got to show off. Hopefully it's a really good show. But anyway, we'll see you over there. So as you can see, we're here at Formnext 2025. We're here at 2024. So I'm really curious to see what's changed between the two years, technology or maybe just the size of the event. But anyway, let's go check it out and see what's new. All right, so I'm here at Form Next with Elegoo, and I've got If here who's going to explain uh -huh. probably one of the most anticipated printers uh, of this next year, mm -hmm. which is the Jupiter 2. Yes. So my first question about the Jupiter 2, which mm -hmm. I probably received the most, is when is it actually going to come out? We will release it like at around like the first quarter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, next year. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Q1 mm -hmm. 2026. Yes. 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 Okay. Well, let's talk about the machine then. I mean, so, some of that stuff has been online and people have seen it you know like the what kind yeah. of lcd it has and stuff like that one yeah so as i open this one up there's a few questions that i've kind of had yeah yeah yeah. Sure. first thing is does this thing have auto leveling or is it a manually leveling system this one has the auto leveling and also auto hitting and actually we got uh besides for that we we got some other auto features you know like some advanced features like the quick release system the auto bomb the next question I saw right here was this VAT, which looks very familiar to a VAT that's recently uh -huh. come out from the teacher systems, the Hoop VAT. Okay. So this one right here, this one, but this is manufactured by Elegoo. This is an Elegoo VAT. This is what we expect to receive so, on yeah, the printer. Yeah, that's, that's Elegoo's VAT, you know. Yeah, it's our own companies. All right, so here we are with the Mercury Wash Max. Yes. When did this release? Because I actually didn't know about it until uh -huh. like on the airplane uh -huh. coming to form next. Uh -huh. So actually, we haven't confirmed it, but we just want to showcase, you know, like, when people, they are really interested in the Jupiter 2, this shrine machine, especially when, uh, when they are doing some large project. So yeah. they were just asking, okay, what kind of post progressing I mean, machine we can use for large project? And here it is. Yeah. It's a pretty big machine. Yeah, that's, that's really dry, you know? Like, yeah, this, though, basically, this thing could fit inside of that. Yeah. That's about how large it is inside if you want, like, a visual. Yeah. That's a 36 liter and a 6 liter. Does it come with both, or is it like this or that? I think you can just choose different kind of option. If you, if you just prefer maybe two small one, you can choose. So I just want to thank you for your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And thank have you. fun for the rest of the form next. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. I guess first thing question is, what inspired you to even get into this industry in the first place? It was a personal problem. Ten years ago, I was just making my first resin 3D printing because there weren't a lot of printers available to buy. So I just thought of why not to make my own because I was fascinated by the quality, you know, by the details that yeah. I can get. Then I thought of buying materials for my new uh, printer that I have just made. And that's where I come into a problem because there weren't a lot of manufacturers of you know resins and materials and the ones I got were just really brittle and horrible and that ruined my expectations of my print 3d printer and then I thought why not make it something better yeah. do you have a background did you have a background in chemistry before then or you just really had like a problem and you're like oh I'm gonna solve this I don't care what it takes I'm a mathematician by education, so I, I was a software developer for many years. I have zero experience in, in chemistry, so I'm completely self-taught chemist. Uh, and I'm not an engineer, so I made that printer myself with my friends and whatever, who just helped me a little bit. When you first got into this, when you started making your own resin, uh, how has your process in developing resin kind of evolved mm -hmm. as your company's evolved, both in you know, chemistry and in, you guys do a lot of testing insight to you know, validate your resins. Mm -hmm. So just what's that path look like between then and, and today? Then it was, let, let's make something that works uh, because we have to eat bananas or something like that because we have to survive, you know? So that was back then. Yeah. Now uh, the process is a bit more dynamic. Uh, well, at the Meryl Labs, we usually listen to our customers a lot. 
at shows like these, we just talk to customers. They're, they share their uh, challenges, their, their, their pains and their problems. And when you combine this with our expertise, we can develop the roadmap of products or materials, what to make and uh, what not to make, which is very important. And I think it's very similar what happened with the new elastomeric material that we have just released, FLX 300. That's the, the smudgy one, right? Yeah, the, the smudgy one. It's, it's like memory foam meets rubber. It's yeah, really it's, strange. It's, it's, very, it's very strange, but yeah. it's very satisfying, mesmerizing to yeah. touch. Like you won't be able to tell by the camera about just how it feels to squish this stuff, but it is truly it, it, unique. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it really, customers ask for, you know, good uh, mechanical and compression properties and still be able to print it on many casual printers, printers out there. So I think after many, many months and years of you know, testing internally, as you mentioned, and sending samples to customers and just still validating, failing, you know, getting back to that, I think we eventually just got to the point where we're actually happy with the result. At least for some applications, I think that this is the best product out there. This is the very important thing, just to be better than somebody else out there yeah. at least for some specific applications. There are a lot of great companies out there that are making very nice products and just being able a bit, to be a bit better is very complex yeah. nowadays. Right now, the P1, which just came out, so my first question about the P1 is, uh, what does the P stand for? Yeah, the P stands for professional. We designed this printer for professional users, like who are dealing with like high viscosity resins, like engineering grade resins, and also we uh, designed this for uh, dental industries as well. How did you guys come up with the idea of two resins? Why? What? What drive that? Right now, uh, this is the single plate, but we have the dual plate over here. Yeah. Right, uh, just for the video purposes. So, how, like, were you guys like drunk when you were doing it? Like, <laughs> that's a joke. But like, what drive this idea? We come up with, with this final idea because of one of our customers. Uh, they are from uh, Latin America, and they are in the dental industry. And sometimes they are using like uh, very expensive resins, like for some uh, uh, dental applications. So they are just asking. Do you have like a uh, maybe a small resinette on the like uh, medium sized uh, resin printer? Oh, okay. Yeah. Is there a chance that you could make a build plate like this for the M7 series? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, of course we can make an upgrade. I mean, plat platform for the M7 series. Yeah. So with this entry of the going in here, of course you guys do FDM, you do resin, you do. I mean, now you kind of have a bigger portfolio. What I find interesting is that the M7 came out a, a while ago now, and then your next entry into resin is more for professional. Uh, so at this point, what does your share look like for the resin versus the FDM? And do you think they'll be, like, are you guys doing more R&D into the commuter, into the community, or is it gonna be more the professional, or is it more in the FDM? And where do, those, like, where do you see those numbers going in the future as well? This year, maybe half-half in terms of revenue. Yeah, we see uh, like growing, like rapid growing for the FDMs and also yeah. the filaments. Yeah, we will keep working on the resin printers as well. As well. That is to uh, bring like more professional grade printers, I mean, to meet like uh, higher requirements from the customers, yeah. So I, I'm not so much in the world of FDM, more in the resin. So when I see a printer like this one, my first question would be, kind of what's its inspiration of to make this little tiny printer um, you know, who is your target target audience for it? First of all, this one is a quiet, fast, and reliable uh, entry-level printer. Yeah, and the second, it can handle. Sometimes for uh, new users, they also want to print like multi-color, multi-materials. Yes, my daughter loves yeah. them. <laughs> so, uh, so this one is, uh, I mean, also can handle the multi-color and multi-materials. Yeah, sometimes maybe uh, someone think that uh, maybe the entry level don't have to be like multi-color or multi-materials, but this one can.
We're here with Ray, the CEO and founder of Frozen. Probably the number one complaint that I get with people with 3D printing has to do with post-processing. Yeah. And that's the process, that is also the fumes, basically the safety, as well as the workload going into post-processing. And so recently you've relaunched one product for safety of the air, and you have another product which is like a, a better version of a grow tent yeah. that is to containment. Have you guys looked into anything for automation or safety when it comes to the work involved, which would be the cleaning of the solutions? Okay, for cleaning, actually uh, we developed our solutions mainly targeting for the dental users. Actually in our dental we got a dual wash tank, dual washing, washing machines with the robotic arms to help the people wash automatically. And, uh, and, and, uh, and this washing unit actually is with the leads and uh, automation functions. So it will, re it will actually it will minimize the, the smells. When you, when you do the resin printing, the smells actually come from the, when you wash the alcohol, wash the parts within the alcohol, when you take out, we shake it, and this will cause a lot of smells. So by, do, by integrating the robotic arms in your, in your washing process, I think you will largely reduce the smells in your office. I guess, and a follow-up on that topic, brushed over it a little bit, but you recently released a new product that filters out the air. Yeah. And this is probably about maybe two pounds of basically the material that's gonna absorb the, the toxins when you're doing resin and you could probably hook this up to an FDM printer as well yeah. and filter out some of those air. Uh, this right here of course isn't going to do much for those VOCs. It's going to, this would be like really good for FDM, but this right here is what you need for resin. Now if you see a lot of the products out there that's trying to filter resin, they're not using a huge block like this that's, that's full of these pellets. Looks like you guys definitely did your research in there. 